was to resolve to approve the land lease agreement and the future conveyance between the town of Clinton and Shoreline Ice for approximately nine acres of land on a parcel of property located at Old Nine Road. A motion to approve. Second. Second. Second on it? Second. All right, discussion. Yes, sir. Well, yeah. Is there an, a clause in the contract that allows these uh, individuals to purchase this land after, uh, at, by September 30th, 2013 for $1,000, number one? And number two, is it known to be to contain contaminated material? There's a clause that allows conveyance of the property if they can get all the permits in place by September of 2013 and approvals in place to build a hockey rink then the property would be conveyed to them. $4,000? For $8,000. They have knowledge of everything that has ever been tested on that site. They have had access to all that information prior to actually making this uh, formal proposal to the town. Who's responsible for the remediation if it's so needed on this property? The developer for that nine acre piece. And that's an open end. He, he can walk from the deal yep. or remediate. Yep. If it comes proves to be too costly for him, he can walk away. Can walk. And the final purchase price is quite one thousand dollars conveyance of the property. Okay. Yes, sir. How did you arrive at such a low price of a thousand dollars? It's an incentive to get somebody to come in and do something with a piece of property that otherwise is worthless to the town. If you can, they can figure out a way to make this a piece of property something that can be used viably. It'll stimulate economic development in town, which is something people are rallying about. Uh, the potential grand list growth and possibly ninety thousand dollars a year in tax revenue, which we currently all see from this property. Any possibility? Something could go wrong and they could engage the town of Clinton in a civil lawsuit. No, the way the lease agreement and the purchase is written up, the town is held, the landlord, which we will be in the beginning, is held harmless for anything that on that site. We own the problem as it is anyway. By them taking this nine acre piece, that part becomes their problem if they're going to develop the site. What's the total acreage? 60 acres. And that's what they're buying nine of yeah. them. Yes. Yeah. All right, yeah. thank you. Yes, sir. As the uh, potential buyer, been formed of the tests that have already been formed in that area over the last many years since the old dump site was closed. They've, they've gotten every book, every test that we've had. They have it all before. Every they, lab report. Yep. 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 I made sure they knew when we talked about them doing this, Mr. Dolan. I said, Do you understand? And Mr. DeFilippo was there, and I can certainly he can attest to it. I gave him every piece of information to look at that we had. Go. Did I not? Uh, has Environmental Council been consulted about how it actually works if it is to be determined that there is environmental uh, to be remediated? Yes, this was all done with our town council and environmental council with their attorney, Ray Gallo. Because my understanding is that if it is found that there is a remediation uh, required, it is always the owner of the property that's responsible or whoever was the initial polluter, if it could ever be determined. With the Transfer Act, for someone purchasing the property, having full knowledge of the potential contamination, then assumes the responsibility for that contamination. What determines what full knowledge is? Given them everything we have, part of their due diligence is, again, to have to go in and do their own site investigation to determine if there's anything there that they cannot deal with. And uh, Joe's got an environmental scientist here with him. Uh, if they dig into the ground and say, you know, it's not worth it, then they just say, forget it. I already got one from Ben. Uh, Alan's in front. Yeah, um, how is this going to relate to the remediation of the total site? Because I know there are, there's a possibility within the state statutes for partial remediation. Uh, not this is a, a larger site. This is just a portion of it. And uh, to what what will the standards for remediation be? Because there's a lot of variances that the state can grant for non-residential uh, remediation. And the question is, will they actually deal with nearly what's required? There's two questions. Will they nearly uh, deal with what's required to get the DEP uh, approval to build? the ice rink, or will they remediate subsoil conditions, which could be covered up, but which might affect the, the sort of leachate plume 
from the entire site. That's something that they're going to have to work out with the EEP. Well, I, I think there's a question here. The town would never have to remediate subsurface conditions. The town's remediation process would simply be to have to cap that property. We would not have to remediate it if we're not going to use it for future use, as in any landfill site. Except if it's seriously adversely affecting water. Right. And at this point, there are some, there have been some odd hits, but those hits, Mr. Donald can attest to, have been below the standards, although they yes. found some stuff that has been below the, the standards for drinking water. There's been chloroform right. found in one of the sites right. that we're monitoring every three months. Right. And it's, but it is within acceptable limits. It's in acceptable current limits. Right. Full-blown remediation, regardless of who does, does it, occupies it, I probably never will be. It'll be like hostage. The other question I ask you, how does this relate to the resolution of the Board of Selectmen? I, I don't understand the, the phrase and the language, which is approve the use of purchase. I, I, you know, I don't know what you, I don't know what the Board of Selectmen approved. We approved a, a land, potential land lease, and eventual conveyance of this property. Nothing says that. That's in our minutes. It's not in your minutes. Yeah, that's what I, we I, will, I have a copy of those minutes. It is not in the minutes. That is that is the language of the minutes and the approved minutes. Did we approve this lease agreement. Did you have the lease agreement? Yes, they did. Yeah. Did, did, did the board, the entire board, have that lease yes. agreement? Anybody else? No. I have something you already want, Bill. Yeah. Um. 46 years ago, my father was in the uh, trash hauling business, and we used the <coughs> landfill. Uh, probably a couple times a day we were up there. And there was a big industry, industry in this town who used to dump 55 gallons of dr drums of uh, industrial waste and petrochemicals in the landfill up there. Um, there's a lot of stuff in there. That place used to be a valley. Now it's a mountain. Um, are we going to be on the hook? If they find something on those nine acres, are we going to be on the hook to remediate the rest of the 60 acres? No. This because I know years ago they discovered the wells on people's houses in that area were polluted with benzene. Right. So we had to run. Which has gone away. Which has gone away. It's gone and somewhere there else. There are no VOCs detected in any of those wells, Mr. Dolan, am I correct? Right. So the wells are, they, we provided them with city water. No, um, we didn't. Now we're, we now we're getting... Coliform or whatever it is in there. Which is not, coliform is not a byproduct of the land. That's where they don't understand where this is coming from. It's not something. I just think you're opening a big can of worms if you start digging up there. That's, again, for the nine acre site, that's going to be their responsibility. We're not eligible for brownfield remediation money anymore. The town's municipalities are not given that money. It's given to the developers to want to take a site like this and develop it. They have the opportunity to get money from the feds and the state to remediate the site. So if they find something on the nine acres, mm -hmm. Would they assume that there's more on the other, the balance of the 60 acres? We don't know that. Well. Um. Uh, Tom Casino, 92 Pontiac Road, the Development Committee. Uh, from everything I heard tonight, it would be in the best interest for the town to have a private developer take it over to the million, something like $4,000 a year. Attempt to. Attempt to, and to save them town money down the road. Where if the town later on has to go to clean the property, the private developer will take the cost of this, will save the town money, bring jobs into the community, and I think this is something that we need to help stimulate the economic development. They didn't need to do it, bring people into the town, will help out the end of the year. We're a seasonal tourism town, anything that would add to this, and bring money and jobs in, give it to us. Oh, yeah, yeah, a couple questions. Mm -hmm. Urban Able, uh, Board of Finance, 43 Sales by Um I just recently noticed that when the Board of Finance was given this at the very last minute, um, there were no attachments when we voted on it. Attachment A and B, which is part of this lease, were not provided to us. Um, question about the soccer and lac lacrosse fields uh, that they can build on that land. Um, if they don't need the area for parking, that's what it says in the lease agreement, correct? If they don't need it for the building or for parking. Right, which concerns me a lot more about potential fumes, pollution, whatever, when kids are playing on ground. And it specifically says in the lease agreement that if it meets the standards required in order to build those fields. So this is a lease purchase. Mm -hmm. 
another question. Can they sublet? It's not addressed in here. What it's if it, it what if they say, decide that? It does say that here they cannot, they cannot sublet. It has to be run by Shoreline Ice Incorporated. Well, what if Shoreline Ice Incorporated decides to go into the shooting range business or some other business? I mean, they could. Any business can branch off and decide that ice rinks isn't popular or <coughs> profitable and something else might be. If it's, it the use, if it's a change of use, they have to come back to zoning. Okay. Um, the third question is uh, their insurance policy. Uh, the, this land lease says that they um, have, that we as the landlords from time to time will ask them for additional, to make sure that they have the money and their policies are up to date. Considering that this is a polluted site, it's an important issue. Um, I wondered if that could be firmed up instead of saying from time to time to an exact amount of time, every three months, every month, every 30 days, every six months. It, it, it's it, kind of broad stroke. Once the town is named additionally insured, and any, as with any policy, if the policy lapses, the town is immediately notified by the agent that the policy has lapsed. Just like if you don't pay your car insurance, your bank's going to, if you have a loan, the bank's going to know that you didn't pay your car insurance and it's expired. And who, who were the attorneys that worked on this? Landlies? John Bennett and Greg Gallo, who represents Shoreline. And John Bennett is confident that this uh, indemnifies us That's from. There's several several paragraphs in there, several places where it says it's um, and it's held harmless. It's as good as ink on paper. Uh, everything is to this day, unfortunately. So, Mr. Fritz, yeah. Uh, first I will, uh, I'm all for economic development. Uh, ice cream sounds wonderful. I have no problem with that. But I am, uh, I do have a problem with the process. This whole thing seems to be kept very close to the vest. There wasn't much information around. I understand it was given to Planning and Zoning and the Board of Finance within hours of the meeting where they were asked to approve this. So, in my mind, it raises suspicions. We, we've had problems before with land swaps, most recently causing a uh, downstream effect that ended up in a scandal, if you want to put it that way, on Planning and Zoning. And I, I just get suspicious of things that are not given proper public scrutiny. So I'm not against the idea I'm certainly not against the development, I'm all for it, but I'm just very concerned that we seem to don't worry about process in town, we don't seem to worry about the charter sometimes. Uh, it just seems that when, when there's not proper public scrutiny, I have to ask why. Uh, you know, was this property advertised? Uh, all these questions, you know. And because it's polluted, maybe $1,000 is, is a good price, but it's, it certainly begs a question. I'd like to buy nine acres for a thousand dollars. Why not this nine acres? I would have to. <laughs> but I, I have to wonder, not knowing the environmental laws, I have to wonder, you know, as it sits now, I guess we're not really spending any money on it other than to monitor it. But if it all gets dug up and all of a sudden discover things, it's leaching into the water table. They know what's there. Are, are there are the, I, I want to make sure we're not then going to be on the hook for the remediation. We're always going to be on the hook for remediation of the whole property if they don't do anything with nine acres. We're on the hook for 60 acres, regardless of what no. Forever in a day. It's just a matter of when our hand is forced. <coughs> they know what's there. There's been extensive testing done on that site a long time ago. They know what's there. That's bad. That's not Bottom line, I'm inclined to fall well, against it. Here, here's the thing. I don't know why, you know, I don't know why the Board of Finance say they got it when they got it. This was done at the May 16th meeting, think we have to. The Board of Selectmen does anything, it's going to be on the Board of Finance agenda and get sent out. <coughs> Will the Board of Finance members read their email or they come in and check their folders? I don't have that control. It was sent to the zoning board on May 22nd, the 814 letter with the lease agreement, with the field cards, etc. For a June, I think it was a June 6 meeting. So there was plenty, plenty of plenty of time and ground. I can't control when the, the clerks or whatever for the board distributed the information. It wasn't done three hours before the meeting, as I've been heard. So, really, I beg to differ. I was in the town hall one o'clock that day of our board of mm -hmm. finance meeting. I emptied my file. I made a special trip to talk to Mary, who is our secretary, asking her if there was anything else that was going in the file that would be on the meeting tonight. She told me no. So I did not I come back at 2, 3, or 4 oh. o'clock in the afternoon. So as the Board of Selectmen does it's going to be on the Board of Finance agenda and it's supposed to get sent out. It was not in my file at 1 o'clock, okay. and I was told nothing else. And I have the date right here on when I sent it to the Zone Board. 
All right. I'm just telling you, practically, we did not, it was not in our hands and there was no email sent to us. You need to come back to the town hall and pick up information. And you handed us an 11 page document that you asked us to vote on. In I didn't hand it in. I it was distributed. I Thank you, Willie. Okay. Uh, Jamie Lips, 18 <coughs> Avenue. I grew up on Country Village Lane. I know I'm well aware of what this property potential can be. And I totally congratulate the family to come along and represent <coughs> something that could most definitely bring huge prosperous things to come in. Um, and I also wanted to mention that what this gentleman over here asked about it being in the proper time frame, um, I believe that they did do what they had to do, and I think it just got overshadowed by all the other things that people just get too wrapped up in. in this so I'm all for it. Hi, I'm Meg White, Commerce Street. I've been a skater my entire life. I've traveled to every rink in Connecticut. My son was a hockey player. Um, so I can tell you firsthand that the demand for ice is very, very high. That I don't see any potential with that rink ever being not being used. And um, the amount of money that we spent in the towns that we went to visit uh, was a, um, a lot of uh, money. And I know that hockey families and figure skating, skating families are devoted. And this is nothing but the best news that I could have heard that's going to happen to come here. So I am all for it. Has anybody else expressed interest in the property? No. Is there any other use for that property right now? No. Okay. I echo what this woman said. I've played hockey my entire life. Hockey is very, ice time is very rare. I would love to drive five minutes to play instead of 30 minutes to Milford, North Branford, and Norwich. This is the best thing. <laughs> Lisa and Mayor for Mayor Ms. Knox. We tried in 2007, remember? Yes. And then the yes. economy had, got, yes. had a full bump in the economy. We stopped. Yes. And, and, and back then, we had, I had immediately contacted the um, athletic director from the Madison Public School, and he sent me within two days um, a letter of commitment and agreement to rent our ice. Um, the, the feasible studies were done years ago, and the amount the amount of towns that we utilize our rent is, I'm a hockey mom, and I'm, I'm knee deep in it, I have a 10 year old, I have three boys, and the money we spend on gas, just alone. And it would be privately owned, which it, 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 it's just a great thing. Yeah, I'm, I just have some points of information that are not fair. Um, is those leads, um I'm kind of looking at the statement, a land lease um, for future conveyance between the town. It's a lease for a period of one year. September of 2013. So at least to September of 2013 for about. Okay. And that time they have to they have to do their due diligence and line And then up. after okay, this lease um, is for this nine acres only. And they're not, they can't do anything with this property until they've gone to planning and zoning. They all have permits and approvals. Okay, now the issues with, um, I mean, obviously there can be issues as to when you would go in to the property. There are no other easements across that property as part of this. Lease. They're strictly off of old non Okay. So it would be off of night. Is there another area on that part of that property? <coughs> this property, the entirety of the property, the 60 acres of this property, which is in three different blocks. There's access from the East Shore, there's access from Notch, there's access from Public Works. This is strictly a piece off old time. There's no other access granted in any other way to place on that property. So it would have to go through the area no, 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 hold on, hold on. Okay. Over the highway, take a right, and up the hill. Yeah. Okay, okay. Which back in the day when a dump was running, there were probably a lot more cars and trucks going in and out of there than would be from a hot day. 
Willie, Willie, could you could you say that again about the easements or? There are no easements across any other on any of the other property. I thought that this lease included an easement over e, over no. to East Shore. I was asked if there was any other access to the property because I thought they were asking if this was going to landlock the rest of the town property. And I said there is access to the town property from East Shore and from all, and from Not Road. And through the DPW. To there are the no easements property. through any other roads or any other pieces. But this lease does not cite an easement from the hockey rink area to East Shore Road? No. All right. Well, another question I heard brought up at, at the planning committee the other night was um, who is going to, I mean, this is going to add a lot of wear and tear or a lot of traffic to roads that are essentially paved cow paths, and that will put a burden on public works and on the town. Um, will there be any provision for bringing the roads to um, heavily trafficked? No, we'll um, ask for improvements on the roads for the traffic commission based on the potential flow of traffic by the developer. Willie, there's a case that says the town cannot impose that you burden on the developer. You can ask, and if they're friendly, they would Well, asking and doing are two yeah. different things. If the traffic warrants the use of the road to be greater, uh, we can't just impose that as a planning agency on the developer because there is case law that prohibits it. So and asking doesn't mean anything. And just just for the record, Willie, Joe. the Board of Selectmen, I did not receive a copy of that lease before the meeting. I thought that we were voting on an idea, on a concept, and I voted to have this concept move forward to the... Um, appropriate approval agencies. Everybody. I have the first I saw of the written lease was tonight. I never got a copy of that lease. I never got an email Everybody of that lease. The lease Carol. I did we, not I get that lease. lease I know you did, but I don't know what I don't have if nobody gives it to me, and I never received a copy of the lease. I think, I think everybody was distributed a copy. <clears throat> well, it wasn't because so I didn't get. That road was, used to be a quarry on that road. So up to six years ago, seven years ago, that road was heavily traveled with triaxles, tractor trailers. That road was more insufficient for that site. Not the part you're looking at. It's a small town that was built for a long time. Can I also second something just living in that area? It's not a cow pasture road. I walk it every single day with my son. It's perfectly paved. I said a, a cow path road. A cow path road that originally was access to farm and then gradually becomes a road over time. Here's the thing, Willie. Uh, we approved the nine acres, and that's an acceptable site. It's a good possibility. Other developers want to come in and maybe improve the other remaining acres. Okay. Just for clarity, we we'll vote tonight on this issue. We're not. Are we not? Are we voting for just the one-year lease or the sale following the lease? If the if the improvement that can be built, the all rules that can be built, gets all its permits, which includes approvals, then we would convey the property and the lot. Without any more town meetings. That's not Just so everyone knows, this is the final vote. Mm -hmm. I'm not just. Well, at least it's the, the final vote of the town meeting. There still has to go to all, all the other agencies yeah. involved for the well, approvals. I understand that. But, right. okay. Okay, a couple more. Well, since the applicant is here, can we just ask one yeah. question of the applicant? This is a flip of can you tell us what your experience is with soil contamination and mitigation? My, <clears> I have an environment provision here. I'm a developer, I'm a builder. I'm, a, I'm an estimated contractor. So I hired a professional team of experts. To take it to, to do this testing. I'm not an engineer. That's why I hired you, Mr. Neil Payne, here to do the bottom list. And that's, that's my team. So you've never had any experience with contaminated soil and mediation? No. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. You have yeah, answer. a few items. I don't know if we've used uh, about planning and zoning. Have they approved? The plan? Have they approved the concept? Because I've heard two different things from you, I think. There, there is no plan. This is to allow the developer to go forward and, and develop the plan. So what did planning and zoning The 8-24, which allows the transfer of property at this point, the lease agreement. What? The 8-24, which allows the lease agreement and the potential transfer of the property. They still have to come back to P&Z with a site plan for approval and everything else that it goes without, as, as any developer would have to go for, for any type of project in time. 
which they could be denied. They never proved nothing. Right? Essentially, no. no. And this is up to them to do their due diligence and get everything approved. If they can't get it approved, all deals are off and it's, it's a, there's nothing happening. Out yeah, I, I, I think, I think going to public works because old not is a smaller road that you want to work. So public works is a bigger road. It'd be a lot easier for for people to find. If there is traffic. something that comes up through the process that they may need to get an easement through another piece of the property, they're going to have to go through the same process. An, e an easement requires going through selectmen, finance, zoning, town meeting, again. any additional easements that would be needed if they find that, 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 that it's not sufficient. That's not. Right. I think the voting public should be aware that. This use is not a use that's permitted of right in that zone. It's only permitted by a special exception to the zoning. And the special exception has to meet a wide range of conditions, and including uh, that it does, the first condition is that it doesn't have an adverse effect on the surrounding area, which I think is an issue, given the fact that the illustrative plan that we were given as, as an attachment. I mean, it's a document, it's a formal document, it's an attachment to the lease agreement. It shows a parking lot for some 200 cars. And that is a residential area that is a polluted site. Something's got to happen to the runoff from 200 cars on that site. And then, so that this requires a special exemption. Also, the illustrative site plan, if you will, directly that. Uh, the illustrative site plan uh, suggests the building of 60,000 square feet. The zoning does not permit a 60,000 square foot building. Mm -hmm. It permits a 40,000 square foot building. Also, the contiguous <coughs> zoning is residential. The zoning requires a 100 foot buffer between any structure in the industrial zone and uh, the uh, residential zones that buffer it. That makes it virtually impossible to build a building in the location where it's shown on the site plan. Which is why they have to do their... And, and, and also, uh, soccer and outdoor recreation, uh, soccer and cross field, are specifically excluded from that zone. You cannot, under the existing zoning, uh, build that on that site. So, you know, the, the town is actually encouraging by this action a, 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 pro, a, a project which does not really fit under our zoning. It requires a number of special, it, it requires a special exception and will probably require two or more variances. A couple more. Peggy. Traffic flow on Old Knot Road. The local traffic commission. 
Will there be lights? So you have they're going to have to do a traffic study. They're going to have to do all that part of their process for the whole. And that cost of selling um, nine acres at a thousand dollars could a private resident purchase the entire sixty acres for the same rate at six thousand six hundred and sixty-six dollars and sixty cents. Well, so you're going to handle the environmental. No, I would donate to the Funds and Land Trust and just let that grow. They don't want. It. They don't want. It. No. <laughs> Not what's under the ground. All right, Steve. Right. So one more, and then we're going to. Obviously, this is a, a hypothetical question. Yeah. Um, first of all, yes, I'm in favor of anything that helps with athletics, athletic activity, certainly as far as economic development within the town. However, and you knew that was coming, um, let's say they do all their due diligence, they find out they can't afford to do the remediation on those nine acres, and they opt to walk away. Can the state or feds at that point force us to do the remediation then. They can force us tomorrow. No, no, that I understand. But by, by doing this, do we open up that can of worms needlessly? I don't believe so, because it was declared a Superfund site years ago, and we were way down the list as far as Superfund. We're 700 on the Superfund site. They've only cleaned up 100 sites so far, and this has been since the 80s. So I don't think it's going to be coming anytime soon. Yes, sir. Yes. So they're only in the direction. Right. right. Oh, you already have one. Thing. One more. Oh, go ahead. As long as everything goes through you, it's possible. But as this comes to you, this is nothing to do with you personally. I'm in the development. Does he have the financial wherewithal to start this project? Have you ever owned? Operated, pays anything, and bringing in outside management company. Outside management company. So, will they be part, the part of the lease? Are they going to be your management company that has to be, should be on the lease? As far as Shoreline, I'm going to be a manager of the facility, a full manager of the staff there. All right. So, they have the experience. They have the experience. They're going to have to have a great team of people. Okay. All right, I'm going to move the question here. All right, uh, by a show of hands, all in favor, please signify by showing hands. Would you, 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 would Motion carries 46 to 34. 